Hello, history optional students. Here, I am going to show you how questions have been asked in the last 44 years. This analysis will help you completely have some idea how questions are being asked in history optional. You can get these booklets also from Diademy office. You can directly visit our office in Old Rajendra Nagar. You can get these copies. This is paper one. I have analyzed all the 44 years. In these 44 years, you will see in which years, which chapters uh, have got more questions. You will get complete idea how UPSC is giving priority, which chapters are getting more attention. This is paper one. As you know, ancient and medieval part of paper one. As part of this, This is the syllabus. This booklet, you will have this proper segregation, section A. This left side is about section A. Now you can see, this is exactly UPSC syllabus. One of the misconceptions about UPSC history syllabus, optional syllabus is, many students complain that it is vast. But you have to change the attitude towards history optional by looking in a different way. It is not the vast you think like it is very detailed one. Suppose if I don't give this detailed one, now if I say only one sources, two prehistory and protohistory, then I can limit entire syllabus to just 14 lines. But will it make history optional very small one? Not at all. And even it will more complicate. If it is only 14 line syllabus, it will complicate us. That's why UPSC very categorically clear cut, it has given what are the subtopics under chapter sources? What are the subtopics under prehistory and protohistory? That is why, just if you read one by one, suppose if you have sufficient content for archaeological sources, then you can put a tick mark that your preparation is done. Now, next immediate target is writing some questions on that particular topic. Literary sources, indigenous sources, and foreign sources. Once you have done it, your preparation is done for chapter one sources. After reading, immediately go to the previous year questions. Now you see how questions are being asked on sources. First one, sources. This is where exactly this PYQ analysis will help you. In every chapter, you will have two sections. One is the trend, last 44 years trend. In which year, how many marks came? And in the second section, what are the exact questions that are asked in each chapter? Now, come to this. Sources. This PYQ analysis is exactly like UPSC syllabus. Chapter 1, sources. In chapter 1, sources, if you see last 44 years trend, 79 onwards till 2022, all the 44 years. Now you can see in which years the questions are being asked. In 80 to 20 marks, then you can see no question, no question, 96, 60 marks. That time before 2012, 13, before that, questions were for only five questions they used to take and 300 marks were there for history optional. That's why five questions, so five into 60 marks. One question, 60 marks. Allowed in Kilji reforms, 60 marks. And there is no, I have shown you how previous year booklet also will be like. In question come answer booklet, question will be printed now in the present pattern. Earlier, there was no such condition. You can give like a question number six or seven, you can start writing allowed in Kalji reforms, as many pages as possible. You take the additionals if it is required. That's why in those times, 60 marks were, were very common. But later, these 60 mark questions turned into 20 marks maximum, 15 marks, 10 marks like that. Now we can see, no question after 97. Now once again, in 2006, once again came, seven, once again came, Nine onwards. Now you see, since 2012, you will see some kind of importance. Because earlier there were only five questions, but 
so many chapters are given that's why in many years the same topic will not be it's not possible for the all types of chapters will get the questions every year but from 2012 and particularly 13 onwards number of questions in the question paper increased marks for each question reduced 10 marker 15 mark 20 mark that's why now almost every chapter is getting opportunity you can say to see the question so each and every chapter this is another aspect also we need to identify we cannot neglect any chapter all the chapters which are mentioned in uh, syllabus we have to because if question number seven if you select a b c all the three subsections are you are supposed to write a b you may be comfortable but c you will not be comfortable if you leave certain areas this is where exactly our value added notes and PYQ solution book will help you a lot. You can see from 14 onwards, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19. Now you see, same chapter, chapter one sources, now questions. Every year, more or less, questions are being coming. Sometimes 15 mark, sometimes 20 mark, sometimes more than that. 35 marks also in 2019. 20, 22 this year also, it was asked. Now, what are the exact questions? This is the first trend. Second part, exact questions. In 1982, what is the question? Here, you can see the subtopic also on historiography. Historiography. In 2006, approaches to study. Discuss the changing approaches to the study of early Indian history. Archaeological sources, foreign accounts, now you can see reconstruction of early Indian history is hardly possible without the help of inscriptions and coins. Syllabus, clear cut, archaeological sources, literary sources. In archaeological sources, the question is asked. Foreign accounts, in literary sources, foreign accounts. Likewise, archaeological sources, foreign accounts, foreign accounts, literary sources, archaeological sources. Archaeology, literary, foreign accounts. Now you can see. If you just follow the syllabus exactly, questions you will see in the exact similar way. And you need not to worry about the detailed one. Because, because if it's detailed, it appears very big. But in fact, it is making our life easier by giving such a detailed description. This is how first part in last 44 years, what is the trend and in the Next section, what is the exact question that is being asked? That is chapter one. Next one, chapter two, prehistory and protohistory. That is the exact syllabus, exact chapter in our syllabus. Trend in the last 44 years. Now you can see, this section, you will see almost blank. Not many questions are being asked. In the recent years also, 13, 16, 17 questions came, but after that, it was not asked. 2022 also, it did not come. So this will give you one more input that in 2023, it might be expected. Because UPSC will always focus on the neglected part. If any particular area is neglected for a long time, UPSC used to give some attention to that particular part. Otherwise people will not read that particular chapter completely. You can see in prelims also, this is very common. People earlier, they were not reading ancient history and medieval history at all. Many students are not comfortable with ancient and medieval part. One of the reasons for not students not concentrating on ancient medieval part is most of the questions were not coming. Most of the questions were from modern India. So generally, any student will try to save the time by completely skipping it. They want to focus on area which more number of questions are coming. Obvious, for every student, time is very, very important. If you spend some time, you should see the output. In this calculation, people were completely neglecting ancient and medieval. And it came to such a difficult level that people are not at all comfortable with the art and culture part. Because they don't read art and ancient India and medieval India. But if you don't know the narration part, what happened and which 
kingdom or which developments took place in sequential order it is very difficult even to remember art and culture also because art and culture questions are more but students are not reading ancient and medieval part it was once now you can see in this year modern modern india hardly any question very few questions but ancient medieval nowadays gaining more priority what lesson we can learn from this upsc experience is if you identify any neglected part but it is given in the syllabus then you should be very much careful about that particular chapter because now you see blank 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 it doesn't mean this chapter is completely forgotten by upsc now this dead body will be remembered or it will come to life once again by giving they will not give very difficult question they will give very simple question but still we will feel difficulty because in the past few years no question is coming so we feel it is not important exactly for this reason i have given all the 44 years because otherwise if i mention only 2003 16 17 if i mention only hardly how many five i need not to give all these blanks for the rest of the years but i wanted to give you the complete idea and i want to make you understand how upsc may change may change its attitude towards this neglected chapter that's why this particular chapter you should be very much careful particularly if there are four five years there is no question you should be more cautious you can see the exact questions chapter 2 is about prehistory and proto history neolithic mesolithic paleolithic and chalcolithic you can see the different questions chalcolithic culture chalcolithic culture neolithic chalcolithic 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 so this shows the importance of chalcolithic and also the importance of prehistory if question comes you should not be afraid of this next one indus valley civilization now you see every student know indus valley civilization is very very important this is important because more number of questions are coming in upsc exam now you can see one of the reasons one more part here you have seen all the blanks in paper in chapter 2 prehistory why means most of these questions come from map question itself here i have mentioned only the theory part which is the normal question but if you see map marking i have shown you how many chalcolithic in single year itself six chalcolithic sites that means 15 marks that means all the 15 marks came in map question itself so that is how that question can be formed in chapter 2 in this way also and it can be asked in map marking also that's why upsc will not leave any area which is given in syllabus that's why each and every part in the syllabus matters a lot next one indus valley civilization now you can see this continuous questions and more weightage from 79 onwards 60 60 20 60 20 every every year or more or less you will find 13 onwards 20 15 20 15 20 15 20 likewise so 20 23 question may come blank may come but again we should not be thinking about that because in map also some harappan side early harappan mature harappan late harappan that type of questions can be asked as part of question like this subtopic also you can see town planning questions trade related question origin theories religion this is where exactly value added material will help you a lot because general answer everyone will write but when you are writing the answers for indus valley you need some kind of archaeologist and also the evidence which came for a particular type of dimension likewise decline theories there are different origin theory and decline theory and which person gave which theory also matters when you write you may get out of 20 mark if you get 10 marks or 8 marks that means 40% only but from 40 to 50% 60% that number will change based on the evidence which you provide urbanization urbanization water management 
economy, geography, political, social, economy, origin, decline, origin theories. So likewise, sub-dimension-wise also I have given. Likewise, for each and every chapter, megalithy, exactly like what UPSC has asked syllabus-wise, you can find when it comes to medieval part. Now you can see. For example, when it comes to 15th and early 16th century, society and culture. Now you can see how questions are coming. In those parts, how 10 marker, in which chapters 10 marker questions are appearing more? In which chapters 20 marks are appearing more? You need to have proper idea. For example, early medieval part. If you go to early medieval chapter, most of the students are not that comfortable with early medieval part also, because it contains the culture, when it comes to sources also, we do not have any single source properly organized one. Suppose if you go to that area, now we can see, in the last 44 years, which chapter? This is chapter number 14, Cultural Traditions in India, 750 to 1200. That's why I told UPSC always try to bring those areas which are neglected for a long time. Now you can see, in this chapter, 2022, how many questions? 60 marks. These 60 marks are distributed into four questions. How dangerous it is. 15, 15, 15, 15. If you are not comfortable with this chapter, what will happen to this year? Because UPSC forces us to write these questions as part of different, different questions. Question number four, ABC, one question will come. Question number five, one question will come. Question number three, one question will come. So if this particular chapter distributing these questions in different ways, then you cannot pick up any question with full confidence, 100% confidence. That's why this analysis is very, very important to understand which area are gaining more importance in recent years and how trend is also changing. But one advantage of this chapter is many questions are repeated because themes are very limited one and these themes are often going to be repeated. For example, impact of Islam, Adi Shankara, Al Biruni. Now you can see on Al Biruni itself, how many years? 16 also, as latest as 16, as old as in 1989. Theme is same. When it comes to Adi Shankara, 2019, 1987. You can see, themes are going to be repeated in this particular chapter. In this way, you are going to see, if you are not comfortable in certain chapters, you see the previous year question, and you will feel very much relieved that this chapter is not that big difficult as you are thinking. For that purpose, I have given this systematic analysis. You pick the copy from Diademy. You will get complete idea about how questions have been framed and in which year, which chapter has got more number of questions. Likewise, this is chapter 19, same, all 44 years trend. Likewise, all the 24 chapters in paper one. And when it comes to paper two also, Modern India and the Modern World Paper 2, similar type. For example, if you go to the old history, Enlightenment. You can see how questions are being framed in with respect to Enlightenment. Because Enlightenment is one area where students are not that comfortable when it comes to world history. Enlightenment and modern ideas. As part of value addition material, I am going to give some important uh, themes which are important uh, for the examination. Now you can see, every year, every year you cannot skip this, even though you are not comfortable or not, doesn't matter, but you cannot skip, you are forced to write. 10 marks, 10 marks, 20, 10, 10, 10 plus 20, 10, 10, 10, so you can see. Since 2010, continuously every year, at least 10 marks, at least 10 marks, you are going to write. Definitely how to write about this. 
and if you see the questions because earlier syllabus was different in the old days in the latest pattern most of the questions related to russo con because it was already given in the syllabus upsc good part about upsc is it will not go beyond the syllabus con russo enlightenment con russo enlightenment marxist because it is already specifically mentioned socialism socialism capital con socialism russo socialism enlightenment enlightenment russo socialism now you see UPSC always restricted to the sub themes in that particular chapter. That's why it is very detailed one, and it is very easy for us to write. Once we cover the sub topic, our task is done with respect to examination. Engels did much more than Marx himself to popularize the ideas of Marxism. Earlier, Marxism related. Now you see, earlier suppose um, socialism. how would you explain the nature of pre marxian socialism one question and socialism with the writings of karl marx socialism assumed the form of scientific socialism whatever areas earlier covered now upsc will try to same socialism it will be asked in a different way if you see in prelims also every year buddhism or jainism related question is to come but despite every year question is coming still it will be different one same is the case here also topics are three topics russo con socialism but every year they have to give one year con socialism russo 2000 now 19 socialism enlightenment enlightenment russo socialism so likewise it has to be con russo enlightenment or socialism but question nature is going to change that's why you need some value addition material that will help you to get more scores by seeing these questions you will come to know that how the nature of questions are going what is the demand of the upsc how demand of the upsc is changing every year for that purpose i have made this analysis systematically with this analysis you will get complete command over previous year questions with the pyq workbook you will get a complete idea how to write in two pages in three pages or in one page 10 marker means only one page i have given you have to completely concise your entire knowledge into one page that's why having a lot of knowledge is very much important with respect to history at the same time how you have to write in a systematic way is very very important to get the score that practice you should not do in the final exam in the upsc hall you have to practice before that that's why pyq workbook solution will help you pyq analysis will give you complete idea and value addition material test series these are various programs for 2023 mains writing students so all these source all these courses are available here at diademy myself i am somashekar i have given five times mains and two times interview all times with history optional and in fact when i started my preparation there were two optional papers i have taken history as one optional and geography as my other optional later from 2013 onwards only one option was supposed to be taken from that time period onwards i stick to history all the five times i have given with the history optional i have seen low score also i have seen high score also in between how i changed my strategies how i have in my first attempt very low score in my last attempt one of the top scores so i have seen that graph in which year has worked me and what are the neglected areas whenever i improved how course how mars changed i have seen that phase that's why with a strong conviction and confidence i can say that if you give value addition to your preparation if you do not neglect map marking definitely you are going to get 300 at least it will be above 280 290 so use this opportunity 
I will be available always at Diademy office in Old Rajendranagar. You can come and meet me if you have any assistance with respect to history optional. I will be available. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you soon.